Dell pretty much crafted the perfect ultra portable with the XPS 13 this year. Now we have the XPS 13 two in one. It's slightly more useful convertible cousin. It brings over a lot of the design changes that we saw in the XPS 13, except now it's in a case that can fold all the way around to be used like a tablet or fold halfway to be used in a tent formation. So we've got the new Arctic white case, which still looks very good. There's gonna be a carbon fiber black version, of course, but I think the most important thing is that the webcam is back up at the top of the screen, which is something XPS fans have wanted for years. And when it comes to other differences from last year's XPS 2-in-1, you'll notice the screen is a little bit taller. It's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio now instead of 16 by 9, which means it'll be a little more useful for spreadsheets and scrolling through web pages and things like that. I really dug this year's XPS 13. It just felt so light and compact and also very powerful at the same time. And somehow the 2-in-1 version, I think, feels even more remarkable. Dell says they're using more metal than ever in any of their XPS machines. In this one, it feels light, it feels compact, but also feels very sturdy. And that's really important for something that you're gonna be flipping around and maneuvering quite a bit. Uh, it has to do a lot more than a clamshell computer. And just by holding it and feeling it, it certainly feels like it could take a lot more. And like some of the machines Dell announced back at CES, they also lowered the screen hinges a little, so the display actually sits much closer to the keyboard. It just looks like more of a flush experience. And together with slightly thinner screen bezels, the overall display experience just looks better than before. One downside with the last year's model is that it was passively cooled and using really low power Intel CPUs. That's gone this year. There are fans once again, but that also means Dell is able to fit in much more powerful processors. So now the XPS 13 2-in-1 is actually a reasonable competitor to the XPS 13. You just have to think about how you're gonna use it. You know, do you need something that's gonna be turned into a tablet? If you do, you may be better off with this one. If you just want something that's a traditional laptop, the XPS 13 is still there. And one new addition this year is a redesigned keyboard using a maglev design, and uh, it feels really nice and really good. And that's surprising because there's not much key travel. It almost feels as shallow as like Apple's butterfly keyboards, but it feels more responsive at the same time. I typically opt for more key travel just for a more comfortable typing experience, but that's not always possible with a convertible. And that's not the only XPS we saw. Dell's also showing off the new XPS 15, which looks pretty much the same as it did before. There aren't many major case changes, but there are a couple tweaks that I think are really useful. The webcam is back up top now. Again, nobody wants a below the screen webcam. You can fit in up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is something for anybody doing heavy workloads uh, they'll really appreciate. And it'll pack in up to NVIDIA's GTX 1660 GPU, which means it'll actually be decent for gaming too, but also pretty useful for something like video rendering. There's not really much to say about the XPS 15, especially since not really much has changed. It's the workhorse option for anybody who wants something really equivalent to the MacBook Pro, and it's gonna have Intel's latest CPUs as well. I think Dell is just shoving in as much hardware as they can to make it competitive, and maybe next year we'll see an actual redesign that'll be really compelling and interesting. Stay tuned to Gadget.com for more news from Computex 2019.